One feature of the Apple AirPods that is quite often overlooked is the fact that they are capable of tracking the head position of the listener. So if I'm listening to audio, the AirPods essentially know in which direction I'm looking. They have your pitch and roll information, very much like you would have if you would do head tracking in a digital audio workstation. Now, you can actually use the Apple AirPods for head tracking if you're using Logic. And I've actually alluded to that in my last video a little bit at least. But the question is, can you also use the head tracking in other digital audio workstations? And in particular, can you use it on Windows? And the answer to that question, surprisingly, is yes, um, with a little bit of or with a few caveats. But you can essentially use the AirPods for head tracking and you can use them in order to monitor immersive audio. And today I'm going to show you how you can do that. But first of all, hello everybody. In case you're new here, my name is Michael Wagner. I teach at the Antoinette Westfall College of Media Arts and Design at Drexel University in Philadelphia. And on this channel, I talk about digital media, game design and spatial audio. And if any of those topics interest you, I invite you to subscribe or join my Discord community. Invert link is in the description below. And uh, since you already added, also please don't forget to press the like button, especially if you get any value out of my videos. It really helps out the channel and makes my videos more visible to other people. Thank you. And with that being said, let's get right into getting some head tracking out of our AirPods. Now, before I continue, we need to talk a little bit about how head tracking works on Apple AirPods um, in order to understand what the limitations are that we're dealing with and what workarounds we need in order to overcome those limitations. Now, the first thing to understand is that the Apple AirPods can send the head tracking information only to Apple devices. So you need an intermediary device. You need to uh, listen to um, your audio through an iPhone or an iPad. Because only uh, if you do that, then the Apple AirPods are actually going to send out the head tracking information to that iPhone and AirPod. Now we are going to use an iPhone today, but you could also use an iPad. The second thing is that the um, head tracking information is only sent whenever the AirPods actually receive audio. So if there's no audio going through the iPhone, then there's no head tracking information that comes out of those. So we also need to make sure that we actually kind of send the audio through the iPhone that is connected to these AirPods and that is receiving the head tracking information. So in other words, there are really three steps that we need to take. In the first step, we need to find a solution that takes the audio from your digital audio workstation and forwards it to an iPhone so that we can listen to it on our AirPods. The AirPods will then send the head tracking information back to the iPhone and that essentially means in the second step we then need to find a application that takes the head tracking information that the iPhone receives and forwards it to the PC or Mac that is running your digital audio workstation. It's going to do that in the form of OSC messages. And in the third step, we need to figure out how to take in those OSC messages and make them usable in your digital audio workstation. Now, in the video today, I'm going to focus on the first two steps only, and that is prim primarily because the third step depends a lot on what type of digital audio workstation you use, uh, if you're working on Windows or if you're working on Mac. And depending on what you actually use, the, uh, the way to actually do that will uh, differ substantially. In the example that I'm going to show you today, I'm going to use Ableton, but uh, if there's any interest in me showing showing you how to do that in a very particular setup, let me know in the comment section and I can certainly create a second video where I show you how to actually make that information available to pretty much any digital audio workstation in any particular setting. So let's talk about the first step. And the first step is to take the audio that comes out of the digital audio workstation and forward it to our iPhone so that we can monitor it through the AirPods in a way that makes the head tracking information available to the iPhone. And uh, there are a couple of different solutions you can use. Uh, the one that we are going to use today, primarily because it's a free one, is called Sonobus. Now, Sonobus is really a networked audio solution that allows you to collaborate across different countries, for example. So if you are working with somebody in a different place and you want to uh, essentially have a joint session where you can work together on audio, uh, this is essentially a solution that allows you to do that. It is free, so we can simply download it, and we need to download it for whatever kind of operating system we use for our digital audio workstation. In my case, I'm going to use Windows, and uh, we also use, need to download the iPhone or the iPad um, application, depending if you're working with an iPhone or an iPad. So uh, I've already done that, so let's open up uh, our Ableton session and let's get Sonobus set up. So here we are in Ableton. I'm going to keep things super simple today, so all I really have is a little drum loop. So let's just have a very brief listen on how that actually sounds. 
But this is really everything that we need today because I'm only going to show you the principles on how to actually connect the AirPods. And uh, then it really depends on what type of application you're working with. If you're working with simple stereo and you want to just have kind of an immersive experience there, or if you're working with surround or Dolby Atmos, depending on how you want to have that set up, the things would differ slightly. But for our purpose, essentially, that is good enough. So uh, the first thing, once again, we need to use uh, Sonobus in order to forward the audio that comes out of the digital audio workstation into our iPhone. And for that, we need to, first of all, add a Sonobus uh, plugin. And we're going to do that on the master bus. So let's just uh, search for Sonobus. And uh, here we are. Let's, let's move that in here. It's going to open up. Uh, and uh, at the same time, we also need to open up our application in our iPhone. So I'm going to do that now. So let's open up Sonobus. And uh, what we need to do is we need to connect. And there are a couple of different ways on how you can do that. Essentially, the way you would uh, you would normally do that is by going to connect and then essentially set a group name that can be either a private group or a public group and then essentially connect to that group from your iPhone. Now, uh, that usually has a little bit of an issue in, in this particular application in that uh, it uh, creates a little bit too much latency. Uh, so what I'm going to do is instead I'm going to use an experimental feature of Sonobus. I'm going to actually do a direct connect because I'm technically on the same network here. So I'm going to click on the three dots here and then essentially it opens up the possibility to, co to connect to a raw address. And the address that we are going to punch in here is essentially the address of our iPhone. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing on the iPhone. Also going to click on the three dots here, connect to raw address. And then essentially I see down there the local address. And the local address that I need to connect to is 192. Dot. Once again, this is going to differ for you depending on your network and your network configuration, obviously. And uh, the port is 58850. Be aware that uh, the application is going to generate a different port whenever you start it up. So you cannot remember that port number and plug it in again. You always need to look that up. So let's uh, do the direct connect. And uh, then essentially I'm going to take put on my AirPods. So let's see if everything is running correctly. So if I am playing the loop now, I should actually hear that through my AirPods. Uh, once again, the audio goes through the network. So let's see. And indeed, I do receive that. Now you see that there is already a little bit of an issue with the network. And that is essentially because uh, I'm running it through a Wi-Fi here. So let's just stop that audio for a second. So essentially I'm running that through Wi-Fi here. Normally what you would do is you would try to connect everything through uh, an Ethernet. And there are actually Ethernet options for your iPhone. Now I can't really do that here because I need to record the, the video here. Normally what I would do is I would simply use an Ethernet connector and kind of then directly connect the iPhone to the network. Uh, that would kind of take care of a lot of these things. But we can also kind of change a couple of things here. So for example, we can change the send quality uh, and uh, and Set, set the preferred quality maybe it's a, a little lower and then essentially we can also change the jitter buffer and make that uh, that buffer a little larger and that should take care of most of the, the jitter problems that we have so let's let's do that again So after a little bit of an issue, kind of, kind of, it, 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 it started to kind of work well. Once again, uh, use an Ethernet connector, and everything should work fine. So uh, now we have the audio in the iPhone, and uh, the iPhone is essentially the intermediary that sends the uh, the audio to my to my AirPods. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to create or I need to use an application that can read the head tracking information and send it back to my computer. 
Now, fortunately, somebody already did that for us. And uh, this is an application that is really hidden deep in the uh, basement of the Apple App Store. Probably nobody knows about it or only a few people know about that. It's a little application that comes with the Mach 1 spatial audio system. And uh, it is capable of reading the head tracking information, not only of the Apple AirPods, but also of other augmented reality headphones. And that application, and I'm going to post a link in the description below, or at least kind of a way on how to actually find that application, is called M1. Now, M1 doesn't really stand for the Apple M1. That is Mach 1. That is the special audio system monitor control. So let's, let's open that up. Now, there are a couple of different options that we have here, and we see that we can either use uh, Bose I, I augmented reality headphones. Now, unfortunately, don't they, those are not no longer really kind of manufactured, at least not to my knowledge. That was something that they did for a while. They don't really exist anymore. And uh, we can also use Apple devices, and there are two options here. We can either use the native device uh, information, that is the information of the iPhone itself. That's not what we want. We want to actually have to use the app paired AirPods Pro IMU. So let's click on that. And then essentially we get to a screen where we can select what exactly we want. We can uh, collect the yaw information, the pitch information, the roll information. So if I'm moving my head, you should essentially see these numbers change according to the position of my head. And the only thing that we need to do now is we need to select the IP address of our computer. And the IP address of the computer that I'm using here is uh, 192 dot one six eight dot one dot two seven once again that is going to differ depending on your particular setup um, and that is it and at that point uh, the iphone is now communicating or forwarding the head tracking information to uh, my computer with the use of osc messages so first for demonstration purposes what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply uh, show you how to actually read that osc message that is coming out of the m1 monitor controller application uh, and the easiest way to do the enabled is with the use of a little max for life device that i've used in a previous video it's called called the OSC input device. I'm going to post the link in the description below. And I'm going to simply drop that onto our master bus. And uh, then essentially I need to specify the path. Now the uh, M1 monitor controller application is going to send that out on a path that is called orientation. And uh, then the second thing that we need to do is we also need to select the, uh, the port. And the port here is specified as 9898. At that point, essentially, I'm already getting the information from the Apple AirPods. And uh, it is tracking everything actually fine and correctly. Uh, and I could then essentially take the uh, whatever I, I need, the your pitch and roll information, and can forward that into your um, setup. So if you're using a very particular binaural panner, for example, you can simply map that information onto your uh, settings in that particular panner and use it that way and control the panner that way. Once again, the first one is the yaw, the second one is the pitch, the, the third one is the is the roll. And that actually works surprisingly well. Now, if you are not working with Ableton, what you would most likely need to do is you would need to find a way in order to take in those OSC messages. That depends a lot on the specific digital audio workstation. So if you are working with Reaper, for example, Reaper is capable of uh, using or kind of reading in OSC information as uh, as an input device. Um, with Bitwig, there is a custom input device that you can uh, that you can use, driven by MOS. Um, and uh, with other digital audio workstations, you would most likely need to uh, run a separate application in the background that converts these OSC messages into media messages that you can then read in. So once again, I'm not going to kind of demonstrate it here because it really depends a lot on what particular setup you have. But if you are interested in me showing you how to do that in a very particular setup, let me know in the comment section below and I can certainly do a video about that. Now what I'm going to do today is a little bit different. I'm not going to work with the OSC input device. Instead, I'm going to work with the plugin that the Mach 1 or M1 monitor control application was meant to be used with, which is the Mach 1 or M1 monitor. And that comes with the uh, Mach 1 or M1 uh, spatial audio suit. Uh, requires you to purchase a license, 99 bucks, but it's a really, really good set of tools. So if you're interested in spatial audio, I recommend uh, that you get that. Uh, now, um, 
we will see that uh, if you use that particular plugin, actually everything becomes super straightforward. So let's just delete the OSE input device here and let's drop a, an instance of the M1 monitor device here. Now the thing is that the M1 monitor device is already set up to work with your, with your M1 monitor controller. So as you can see, I've already getting the, uh, your information here. Um, so in, in the settings, I can also select if I'm if I want to get the pitch and roll information. Um, so let's recenter everything. Okay, and uh, and let's see how that how that works. So uh, if, if I'm playing the the drum loop now, I should be able to let's recenter, recenter it again. Uh, I should be able to now um, essentially kind of get a three dimensional image um, with my Apple AirPods. And as you can see, it works. Now, obviously, in Ableton, the pitch and roll information doesn't give you any available information, but the yaw works actually really well. And I'm actually quite surprised on how well the head tracking works with the Apple AirPods. I've said that in a previous video that uh, the Apple AirPods essentially work as head trackers as good as pretty much any other head tracker that is out there. Uh, so if you are working with uh, kind of special audio, that is certainly a way to go. And while this setup is a little complex and we needed to do a couple of workarounds, I do have to say that if you're working with a regular head tracker, there are also a couple of things that you need to do, a couple of steps that you need to take. So it's not really more difficult or more complicated than working with any other head tracker. With the one exception that if you use your Apple AirPods with Logic Pro on the Mac, then essentially you don't have to set up anything. It just works out of the box. So this is where everything I wanted to say today. Uh, once again, Apple AirPods, Windows Store works. The only thing that you need is an intermediary, which in our case was the iPhone. And uh, that actually kind of works surprisingly well. And you can use your Apple AirPods for uh, monitoring immersive audio. Uh, on your digital audio workstation. Once again, uh, I showed it to you uh, in terms of how to use that with Ableton. If you want me to show it on a different audio workstation with a different setup, maybe in terms of how to use it in connection with Dolby Atmos, let me know in the comment section and I can have a video about that. But that's really everything I wanted to say today. Uh, thanks again for watching and see you at the next video.